In this lab, you will be observing the optimum chemical environment in which luminol reacts. More specifically, this reaction is called chemiluminescence. Recall from previously performed experiments that the evolution of heat is an exothermic reaction. However, this is not the only kind of exothermic reaction. Also recall that the definition of an exothermic reaction is associated with releasing heat in the subject's environment. In chemiluminescence, the heat that is lost is light energy. Therefore, the evolution of light also comes from an exothermic reaction. Based on all of this information, when you are doing your experiment, think about what kind of reaction you are dealing with and what protective equipment you should wear. Wearing goggles, latex gloves, and an apron is a good standard to go by when working on any experiment in the lab. The lights will likely be turned off during your experiment so you can see when the luminol reacts, so take extra special caution when performing the experiment. Being careful not to run into each other. Also take note that the toxicity of luminol is not well known, so try not to spill it anywhere. Now you're ready to perform your experiment. Start with the materials. You will need luminol, an oxidizer, acid and base solutions, and the catalyst. Obtain the test tubes with their block offset. Use separate disposable pipettes for everything so you do not contaminate the solutions. Notice in your lab manual that there are no clear procedures nicely numbered for you to follow. This freedom allows you, the scientist, to hypothesize what you will think will work the best observe what really does, make changes, and perfect the environment for the luminol to react in. Like previously said, you will be testing for the optimum oxidizer, pH, and catalyst. Only test one of these at a time, keeping the rest constant. For example, if you're going to test for the optimum pH, use bleach in all three test tubes. Keeping the amount constant. Add an acid to one, add a base to one, and water for control. Once these are all mixed, you're ready to add your luminol. Add the luminol by drops. If there's no reaction, try something else. The reaction will be a blue light. Make sure you are doing a total of three test tubes every time, leaving one for water. When testing the catalyst, four test tubes are needed as there are three different catalysts saving one for water. One common misconception of this experiment is that the room needs to be completely dark, you need to cup your hands around the test tubes to see the reaction, or that the reaction will be hard to see. This is not true. When the luminol reacts, the blue light will be clearly seen. Fizzing is common also. Make sure when you're reusing your test tubes that you wash them thoroughly with water and alkanox, then rinsing them three times with deionized water. Make sure you fill your water bottle up with deionized water. This is a very common mistake people tend to make. If regular tap water is used, the ions in the water can affect the result significantly. Enjoy the freedom of the lab, but always remember to be careful. In your discussion, you need to report the results that were found. This is basically what worked and what did not work. Make sure to include all of your observations, including light intensity, color, and fizzing. Well, what else do I need to do? Make sure to report all of your sources of air. For most students, this is not cleaning their test tubes every time a new trial is started. When time gets cut, errors show up. Remember that spending an extra 30 seconds washing a piece of equipment is more important than going home and watching TV for the rest of the day. 
I know how much you like watching Jersey Shore, but I promise the reruns can wait. So clean and dry everything. You will need to dispose of all of your solutions carefully. If you collect everything in one beaker, make sure you're using the heavy metals hazardous waste bottle. If no catalysts are in your waste, but oxidizers are, use the halogenated waste container. If the liquid has no oxidizer or catalyst in it, use the non-halogenated waste container. Using these rules for waste is very important, and using the fume hood is even more important. This experiment is one of the most enjoyable, but also one that requires the most caution. Planning is key. In your student lab notebook, write what you are putting in every test tube in each trial and their results. If you do not plan, then you will likely mix up the test tubes and what you are doing, which increases the chance that you will leave something out. A good idea is to plan beforehand what substances you want to combine. Before even walking into the lab, you should have a skeletal outline of what your procedure will look like. Once you are in the lab, you can add or change the skeletal outline. But ultimately, the outline will help you guide along. It's like making a procedure list for yourself. This will also help when writing your discussion because everything will already be organized and you will just have to report the results. So you do not contain this is a common mis rounds in the water will sources of air. Most what? In the end, it's about getting to see what luminol best reacts in why it reacted in it, and what should have been done. Try to eliminate all sources of error, but keep in mind, mistakes are common. Have fun experimenting.